Good evening. Yo, what is up YouTube? This is Tim from Pure Kicks, back again with another performance review. And for those who haven't read the title just yet, today we're taking a look at the Nike LeBron 16. Let's get it. So before we get into this video, first head over to our Kyrie 5 video and enter yourself into our Hyperdunk 10 Christmas giveaway. All you have to do is comment your size down below, like the video, and of course subscribe to the channel, and we'll be in touch with our winner on January 7th. Just those three things to be in with a chance to win the Hyperdunk 10. I'd go do that now. So again, pause the video, quickly head over to the video, put it on watch later, because you can finish watching this one first. Then you can like do all the steps I said. So again, that's like, comment, and of course subscribe. And then you can watch that now, or you can watch it now. But anyway, you know what I'm trying to say. Head over, do that, and it'll be entered. So, yeah. And of course, a massive shout out to the plug, Pro Direct for sending these through. Super excited to get them in hand. Super excited to get them on court. And even super, super excited to let you guys know our thoughts and opinions. So with that being said, Let's get into it. So first things first, talking about how the LeBron 16 actually looks. Aesthetically, I'm sure a lot of you probably felt the same way. You do get a little KD-esque vibe when you do look at the shoe. Compared to his rest of his range and the rest of his line, this is basically a souped up version of a KD, but in the best possible way. Which basically shows his game becoming a little more fluid and a little bit more KD-esque as well. So we're seeing the shoe kind of mirror his game as well. Overall, aesthetically, I think they look pretty clean, pretty mean as well. Loads of opportunities for some amazing colorways. We've already seen some already. But enough about that, let's get into the performance. So as per usual, starting out of our favorite part of the shoe, the cushioning. Now here in the LeBron 16, we're seeing that Nike Zoom Max, which is basically Zoom Air, blown up to improve impact protection, but also still give you that responsiveness it's known for. Now in the LeBron 16, you feel that like a madness. Every single step feels springy, feels responsive. And also when you're landing from your jump shot to your dunks to your layups, whatever it may be, you're feeling your impact protection taken care of as well. Now with all that being said, yes, you do lose a little court feel because it's a little high off the ground, but the comfort's there. So you kind of take a little bit of both. You've got loads of comfort, not so much court feel, but you do have great impact protection and you do have great responsiveness as well. So with all that being said, the LeBron 16 question, it comes out at a nine out of 10. Super legitness, well, well deserved, bang. Oh, that was legitness. Yeah, it was. Moving on to our next favorite part of the shoe, the traction. Now here in the LeBron 16, we're seeing that modified herringbone, also known as racetrack herringbone. Why is it also known as racetrack herringbone? That's what we called it in the LeBron 12 performance review as well. What are you calling it, Flo? Give it a name. I'm gonna call it racetrack herringbone. Racetrack herringbone, you heard it here. So it's basically taken that great traction and slammed it onto LeBron's signature line. This traction performed amazingly. It's super, super consistent across your dusty courts, across your clean courts. It's a great compound as well, so it could be great for outdoors as well. It just did the absolute trick. I felt super taken care of. Step backs, twists, turns, defensive slides, everything was taken care of here in this shoe. Super, super impressed. Now for me, traction is one of the most important things when it comes to hooping in a shoe. And that's where the LeBron was super taken care of from as soon as I put them on. There was no break in time when it came to the traction. It just felt great. It felt super strong, taken care of, straight out of the box. But all that being said, the traction scores a fantastic nine out of 10. Out the gate, this shoe's doing bits. Next up, talking about materials. Now here we're seeing an upper made up of Battlenet 2.0. Of course, Battlenet 1.0 was introduced in the LeBron 15s last year, but here we're seeing an updated version using more Flynet and nylon to back it up on the inside as well. So what this does, it actually increases the structure without losing too much flexibility or adding too much weight either. Apart from the Flynet, the LeBron also sees hints of synthetics and levers across the shoe to of course help with structure, help with support, and of course help with the overall fit as well. The materials felt super nice on the feet, really, really soft, really, really comfortable, wrapped around the foot super, super well, and actually went hand in hand with the fit, is what we'll talk about actually next. Looking at all the materials and bringing them all together, the LeBron materials comes out at an eight out of 10. 
I said it once already, but out the gate, this shoe is doing a madness. It really is. So next up, we're talking about fit. The LeBron 16 has a one-piece construction, which gives you that sock-like fit. Not only that, the tongue actually has this built-in gusset, which widens where you put your foot in. Also, it has these extra eyelets down the side of the shoe to allow you to customize the fit. All of this makes your shoe perfect for wide footers. Not so much for your regular to narrow footers, which is myself. When we're talking wide footers, you can really customize that fit to be perfect to your own specific foot. Now for me, the only way to fix this was to double up on my socks. I did the same thing in the last shoe, but for a different reason. In the LeBron 15, we're also seeing it fit just a tiny bit long, but also a bit long around the ankle area as well. For those who have more of a regular to skinny ankle, this might not fit great around that area. So doubling up did fix that problem, but of course, then takes a hit on breathability and of course being super tight on the foot. So what regular to narrow footers will find is that there's actually a lot of dead space around the shoe in the toe box and around the ankle area as well. The shoe actually comes factory lace to kind of its regular setting. So for those regular footers and narrow footers, I would suggest trying these on first to see if you can get that custom fit to work in any which way for you. But if you're a wide footer, I think you'd be fine ordering these online. No trial needed. Once you do get them, you'll be able to customize that fit. I think they're gonna bang, severely. With all that being said, the LeBron 16 fit comes out at a seven out of 10. Definitely above average. Doesn't quite cater to your regular to narrow footers, but incredibly perfect for your wide footers. So lastly, talking about support. Now here in the LeBron, we have the usual suspects of an outrigger shape, an internal heel counter, along with an external heel clip, and of course the lacing system and the overall support of the shoe all come together to support the foot very, very well. Now I spoke about it in the fit and I spoke about it in the cushioning, the dead space surrounding the shoe and then the minimal court feel does work hand in hand to sometimes make support a little inconsistent. There was a few times I felt like the shoe was moving around my foot. A few times I was a little high off the ground where I felt like my ankle might roll. It being quite a low top shoe, even though it has mid foot aspects it does feel pretty low on the feet so with all that there were some times i did feel not as blocked in as i would like to which is weird when talking about a lebron shoe with all that being said it actually backs up what i was mentioning earlier in aesthetics where lebron's game is changing and so is his shoe so his game is becoming more fluid and so is his shoe the shoe actually kind of comes away a little bit from support but ups things like material and flexibility to allow his game to become more fluid as we slowly approach 20 years in the league. Taking all that into account, the LeBron 16 support comes out at an above average seven, which makes complete sense because I think that's kind of where they'd want it to be, if anything. It doesn't quite give you that usual locked in, locked down kind of feeling of what we've been used to, but it does allow you to flow and allows the game to be a bit more fluid when we're talking that flexibility aspect. So looking at this shoe overall, the LeBron 16 comes out at an eight out of 10. Cushioning and traction did an absolute madness. Air Max Zoom, that racetrack herringbone, that's how I'm gonna describe that. Let down just a little bit in the fit and the support aspect, but for some pretty good reasons. We'll see what they do in the next year to see how true that theory really is. So all right guys, there you have it. But before we go, a massive shout out to Pro Direct for sending these through. If you need your pair, just hit the link in the description. It will take you to the LeBron page and you can see all the available colorways and merchandise as well. So make sure you check that out and pick something up while you're there. And lastly, don't forget to head over to the Kyrie 5 Performance Review to enter yourself into the Hyper Dunk 10 Christmas giveaway. All you have to do is like that video, comment your size down below, make sure you let us know if it's UK, Euro, or USA. And of course, subscribe to the channel to be in with a chance to win. We'll be in contact with the winner on January 7th, so head over to the video. Now is a good time. And of course, do all those three steps and you'll be in to win. So all right, guys, that's everything. Hope you guys enjoyed it. This is the Nike LeBron 16. I'm Timmy from Pure Kicks. Let's get it.